Now let's move on to step five. With step five, we're looking at the features contract. We're looking at the features contract. Okay, what date contract do we need? Should we sell or should we buy? Number of contract that we need, basis and the closing future prices. Then we will look at um, how to get the overall outcome of the features. So the features, your first responsibility in using features to hedge interest rate is what date contract do you need? What date contract? What date contract do you need? Okay, what date contract? The date contract you need should correspond with the contract that matures immediately after your transaction date. The date contract you need should be the contract that matures immediately after your transaction date. In terms of this question, the contract that matures immediately after the date of borrowing. Immediately after the date of borrowing. Immediately after the date of borrowing. Which in this case, we are going to borrow on 1st of March. We are going to borrow on 1st of March. So if we are borrowing on 1st of March, a contract that will mature immediately after 1st of March. And if you look at the question, on the future contract, there is a March contract. There is a March contract. Therefore, if there is a March contract, which is expected to mature at the end of March, then we would have to enter into March contract as our transaction date or date of borrowing is simply 1st of March. So your first responsibility in answering futures contract is which date? Because typically the examiner will be giving you two or three different months. And you need to read the question and see when is the contract supposed to mature. In most cases, the contract matures at the end of the month. But you would have to follow instructions, as we said earlier. If the question tells you in the scenario that the contract will mature mid of the month, you need to respect it. Okay, so your first responsibility is March contract. In this case, as the March contract matures at the end of March, and our borrowing date is 1st of March. Your second responsibility in solving futures hedge will be, should you enter the future contract by buying and close it by selling? Or should you enter by selling and close it by buying? Whatever you do to enter, you would have to do the opposite to close it in order to get your profit or loss. So if you entered by buying, you will close it by selling, and then you will be able to get your profit or loss. Given this question, we are expecting interest rate to increase in most cases. Therefore, as we are going to borrow, there is the need for us to sell the March contract. We have to sell the March contract. Okay, and there is a settlement price of 93.880. There is a settlement price of 93.880. Okay, so once we're going to borrow, let's sell. So that if interest rate goes up, the future price will come down, and then we will be able to buy at a cheaper price and then we'll make a profit on the future hedge. The next will be if you have decided to sell, how many contracts should you sell? How many contracts should you sell? Number of contracts. One thing you need to remember when you are calculating the number of contract is, is there any maturity mismatch? The future contract has got expiry date of three months, three months, three months. The futures contract has got expiry date of three months, three months, three months. And as a result of that, 
the 500 is notionally supposed to be borrowed over a period of three months. How many months are we going to borrow here? We're going to borrow for a period of four months. We're going to borrow for a period of four months. So there's a maturity mismatch. It doesn't match with the normal three months, three months. And therefore, to calculate the number of contracts to sell, you take the amount that you are going to borrow, you divide by the 500,000 contract size, and you multiply by the period that you borrow in, divided by the three-month cycle. So that is where we have Forbes Co. needs to borrow 30 million. Contract size is 500,000. Contract size is 500,000. And um, we're borrowing for four months. And the three-month cycle of... Um, we divide the four-month by the three-month cycle. Okay. So that is the case. And that will give us about 80 contracts. So we will sell 80 March contract. We will sell 80 March contract. After getting the number of contracts, for the purpose of knowing your closing future price, to determine the profit or loss on the future hedge, there will be the need for you to calculate the basis. And basis is the difference between the price of the item and um, the future's price, which in this case, we are going to borrow. The price of borrowing is the interest that we would have to pay. The price of borrowing should be the interest that you would have to uh, pay. So the basis should be the spot interest rate minus the future price. Currently, if we are borrowing, we will borrow at LIBO plus 50 basis point. Nobody is going to protect you against your spread of the 50 basis point. The protection or the hedging is on the movement of the LIBO, the movement of the LIBO. The LIBO is 6%. Future prices at um, the settlement date is 93.88. So to determine the LIBO that can be compared with the future price of 93.88, you need to take the 6% out of the 100. So that 6% will get out of the 100. So 100 minus 6% will give you 94.00 against the settlement March future price of 93.88 and that will give you a basis of 0 0.12. The question told us that that basis is expected to reduce in a linear manner. So how many months are we left to go? How many months are we left to go? Okay, from now up to end of March because we selected March contract. And from now up to the date of we borrowing is just two months. And the date of borrowing is 1st of March. Therefore, the maturity of this March contract happening at the end of March means that from now up to the end of March, we have got three months. From now up to the end of March, we have got three months. Therefore, if the basis is supposed to decline steadily then we have to spread the 0 0.12 over a three months period so if you divide the 0 0.12 by three it gives you 0 0.04 per month how many months are left from the date of borrowing up to the maturity date we are borrowing on the first of march maturity date is on the 31st of march and therefore there are one month or there's one month left. So if there's one month left, then we will have a basis at a transaction date of 0 0.04. Okay, so this will give you the basis for you to calculate the closing price. So your next stage will be to calculate the futures close out price. LIBO if we expect the LIBO to increase by 100 basis points, which is 1%, then 
then the LIBO price will be 100 minus. Currently, the LIBO is 6%. Adding the increase of 1% makes it 7%. So the price should be 93. Okay. The price should be um, 93. And then you will take the 0 0.04 basis out of it. And this should give you the closing future price. If we expect the interest rate to decrease by 10 or 100 basis point, to decrease by 100 basis point, the close out rate will be the 100 minus LIBOR was 6%. And therefore, if it is decreasing by 1%, it should go to 5%. And then you will take the 0, which is 95. And then you will take the 0 0.04 out of it. And it should give you 94.96. It should give you 94.96. So these are the future closing prices, which is the step five.